it sounds incredible but this girl uh, was the neighbor of my wife full of cactuses oh there's music <laughs> So welcome everyone, we are in Ruhrmond in the province of Limburg in the Netherlands. <laughs> the name of Ruhrmond in the Limburg's language or dialect is Remunch and uh, well the city is quite old. Uh, it was part of five kingdoms, Spain, France, the Netherlands, Austria and Germany. And if you come here it might be because of shopping, because there's a very big outlet center that is visited by many Germans and other nationalities. And yeah, we're just gonna check out what there is to see here. We parked just outside the paid zone and then we have to walk like 20 minutes to the center, but it's okay because it's nice weather today and it's not extremely hot. So as you can see here, Ruhrmont has many residential areas and we are approaching the center. Over there is the railway and uh, there's a kind of underground passage for pedestrians to get to the center. Someone stole this car. Or something from the car, yeah. So here we are in the center. It's a pedestrian, pedestrian street, and uh, yeah. Uh, see what they have here. If they have a market, we can even eat there because uh, re the restaurants didn't look very attractive. It's interesting to see that the flag of the city of Rurmont, uh, yeah, it's blue and white, but it has a French fleur de lis. It's possible that during uh, the invasion of France, I guess it was during Napoleon, with the Code Civil of Napoleon, that brought a lot of stability to the city, order that was necessary, and uh, maybe because of that they. They found it uh, prosperous here and they said, okay, we feel French. We feel more French than Dutch or something. Or it's just a random thing, not sure. So, and here we are at the market of Rurmont, which is in front of the St. Christopher's Cathedral, uh, which is where the bishop dom or bishopric of uh, Rurmont sits. There's another church, the Münsterkirk but um, this is the most important one. So the St. Christopher Cathedral in Rurmont was built between yeah, 1410 and 1430 in the form of a Greek cross um, yeah, and then it was burned down in 1554 uh, damaged also in 1892, 1921 and 1945 with the Second World War and uh, well, like I said, part of the bishopric of uh, Rurmont since 1661, so the 17th century. This is the painting that we saw in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. The mystery of the night watch. Sorry. Satay with ouches uh, and sambal. Give a fuck, yeah. So, this is what I got satay, which is chicken with uh, yeah, some peanut sauce or something, and uh, some bread. It's an Indonesian thing. It's a bit expensive at 5 euros, but I hope it fills up. So, now we are going to the cultural center, which is part of the library. Let's see what we learned here about Rurmont. So this is how the city of Rurmont looked like in the past. <coughs> A walled city on the confluence of the Maas or the Meuse River in English 
and the rural river that goes to the rural uh, area. You can see here that a big part of the province of Limburg is actually in Belgium and uh, this area was part of Belgium as well for some time until then it got separated and belonged to Germany for a while and after that to France and then finally the Netherlands but that explains why there's a region in uh, a province in Belgium which is called Limburg Oh, and another thing that you can learn at this museum is that the Fleur de Lis, which is there uh, on the shield and on the flag of Bourmont, is actually not French. It's because noble friends from the Duke of Gellere uh, was governing over this region. And therefore they said, okay, we just put it on the flag. But it has nothing to do with Napoleon or France. There was always a conflict with the Protestants from the north around uh, the 17th century when they put, uh, yeah, both like the south and the north of the Netherlands together. <laughs> This is probably the most prominent, famous person who was from Ruhrmont, Cowpers. Cowpers was, was a painter, designer and architect from Ruhrmont who designed the Rijksmuseum in, sorry, in Amsterdam and uh, also other very important places in Amsterdam also the central station I believe yeah and in The Hague he also designed uh, an important building and many other places it's just very famous you can check him out it sounds incredible but this girl uh, was the neighbor of my wife when she was living in Zwolle and she became famous through YouTube and now look at it she is so famous she appears on the yeah on the front of uh, of a teenager uh, magazine <laughs> well that was the cultural historic museum of Rormont. it was pretty nice for free we can really recommend it you can learn a lot about Rormont, the province of limburg and the netherlands here and uh, yeah it's small square if you could see it I didn't I don't know if I filmed it but well um, yeah now we are free to go wherever we want uh, maybe take an ice cream first and then go to the Museum of Cultures we'll see so this is the ice cream it tastes pretty well it's from this ice cream shop which is called Dutch homemade On our way to the house of Cowpers, we found a, an Australian inspired shop full of cactuses. Whoa. Look, a pedestrian here on the street got paintings. I hope he doesn't notice. Yeah, if we got paintings, they would be pooped by our budgies. If you want to live here in Rormont, you can choose to rent this for 1,500 per month or this for 1,300 per month. It comes with a kitchen and an old chimney and of course you can put your own furniture or you can, if you prefer buying, you can get this house for 700,000 euros plus, uh, you know, extra costs like uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to see with the reflection, but that's a house um, and then you need to pay extra costs, you know, for real estate agent and for taxes and so on. So we are at the Cowper's house, the house of uh, the architect and painter Cowper's, who is from uh, Rormont.
Kaupers was an interesting personality. He was a workaholic and Catholic, convinced Catholic, which is very strange for the Netherlands. Through his work he could unite the north and the south of the Netherlands a bit. And his ideal place would be a city like in the Middle Ages where everyone is Catholic. Now this is a very divisive argument in architecture but his opinion was that the only correct style in architecture was the Gothic style used for cathedrals, churches and so on from uh, the Middle Ages. So that's a very interesting point of view. I don't know why he thought like that, maybe because he was very conservative uh, he yeah, had a preference for medieval cities and you know old styles and that he was a Catholic. Hey, we were that too. We visited that town hall in Middelburg, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Though one point where almost no one might disagree with is that for him, family was the center of his life. He really loved his family and had pictures of his wife and his children on the desk where he worked to let them inspire him and like that he could work better he said he worked very long but always thinking about his family Cowpers had a very vast network of people, of friends and relationships who helped him, gave him, him contracts and uh, yeah, expanded his uh, prominence. But by far the most prominent person and the person who gave him the most contracts and uh, work or most important work is Victor the Stewards. He gave him the contract of building the Rijksmuseum and the castle of the Haar in Utrecht, the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. So, we're done with the Kaupers Museum. So, like we were gonna say before we crashed into each other, uh, we are done with the Museum of Kaupers. It was a very cool museum and uh, yeah, we even got <laughs> two jackets. Um, Although we got the wrong size, I mean, this is more for me and this is more for my wife. But yeah, it's from Cowper, so it must be good. Well, we are done with Rurmont so far. Um, yeah, how was it? I'll ask the expert. Um, quite nice. I think that was a very convincing argument to come here. <laughs>